Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hi. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to the proverb for today. That be the 21st proverb. Did you read the 21st proverb today? Proverbs chapter 21, verses 29 on to verse 31. You are expected to follow me along. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. Who is the he who directeth his way? There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Look at that verse 29, a wicked man hardeneth his face. And then in verse 31, it talks about the horse is prepared against the day of battle. Well, sandwiched between that, verse 30, there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. Yea, hath God said, man's wisdom, philosophy, and stuff like that can come up with a whole bunch of stuff to, you know, to go against what the scripture saith. Kind of like um, how the Jesuits in their constitutions and stuff like that, how... Um, through their moral theologians can deceive themselves on how they can get away with sin and break every one of God's commandments and still be justified. Very interesting. But verse 31, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. What do we know about horses? What was it, about a year ago, I did this video, The Tale of a Stubborn Horse. <laughs> um, I might link it in this video, but uh, what do we know about horses? Go to Job. Come on, come on. Go to Job, chapter 39. Job, chapter 39. We're going to be reading verses 13 uh, on to verse 25 in Job chapter 39. Okay? Job chapter 39, verses 13 on to verse 25. Did I say uh, 29? 13 on to verse 25 in Job chapter 39. We begin. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wing, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain. Without fear, without fear, without fear. Hinge that, okay? Because God hath deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifteth up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paweth in the valley. He rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. 
He mocketh at fear, and is not affrighted, neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, Ha ha! And he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains, and the shouting. Now, with what we just looked at, in comparison to the ostrich and the horse here, okay, it says here, verse 17, because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. And then he goes into explaining about the horse, who rushes headlong into things without any fear. And of course, while we're looking at this, looking at verse 17, Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at verse 17. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What What are you thinking of right now, brother, sister? Yeah, 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 yeah. Job 28, 28, right? Come on, come on. Come on. Job 28, 28. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And then compare that with verse 17 in Job 39. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Hmm, isn't that interesting, huh? Isn't that interesting? You gotta remember too about horses. They're good to look at. But they're strong. And and as we see here in Job chapter 39, verse 21, he paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. For our instruction in righteousness, brethren. Think about these devils. Think about these Christians who glory in strength and flesh. For example, the Catholics. You talk to a Catholic long enough about their church, you know, Holy Mother Church. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, a little congestion there. Sooner and sooner or later when talking with them, it's like, well, if Jesus had a church, it would be the biggest one. Look at all the millions of Catholics there are. It's a good thing to be a Catholic, right? Yeah, because Catholicism is a religion of flesh. Isn't it? And because of that, because Catholicism is a religion of flesh, and their spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. He mocketh at fear, verse 22, and is not affrighted. Neither turneth he back from the sword. Neither turneth he back from the sword. Why is that? Because God hath deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted to her understanding. Talking about the ostrich. Our instruction in righteousness kind of sounds like the Roman Catholic Church a little, doesn't it? And the Jesuit order, doesn't it? Just a little bit. And look at verse 25 in Job chapter 39. He saith among the trumpets, Ha ha! And he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting, drawn to conflict, not to peace. Drawn to conflict, not to peace. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. And what we see here, okay, the horse 
and obviously it's an animal, and animals do not have souls, okay? But the purpose of the horse is that of strength. He paweth in the ba uh, valley, you know, has no fear of the uh, sword or anything like that, okay? They rush long into conflict, not to peace. And that's something interesting, huh? Go to Psalm 32. Psalm 32. I will confess to you, brethren, sisters, church of the living God. You know, every once in a while, the Lord will plant something here and be like, what the, what, what, I, Lord, I'm not, what, what? Sometimes you just got to do what the Lord tells you to do, people. Follow me? Psalm 32. Keeping in mind the horse and how our Lord described about the ostrich who had no wisdom or understanding. And then he goes into explaining about the horse who is very strong, right? The comparison between the two, while very similar, while one is stronger and one is kind of, <laughs> right? But they go on headlong for conflict, not for peace. Hmm. Hmm. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. And, who's, and, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Hmm. Hmm. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. When you kept silence. For example, when the Lord puts you into a situation and that burning, you know, in your chest and in your gut, when it's burning, it's like, oh, you're listening. Like, I should say something. I should say something. And you feel almost as if there is a foot being put, uh, kicked in your buttocks. But you don't, do you? Sometimes. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you do. Verse 4. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture... For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Shelah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters there shall not come they shall not come nigh unto him. And also too, uh, looking at verse three, you know, think about it in this light. When you know that there's something that you're not doing right according to the scriptures. And you're not going to the Lord in repentance. You know, holding on to a pet sin of some sort, whatever it may be. Do you ask the Lord to show you your sins? Takes guts, because you know what, brother, sister? He will. What do you do then? What do you do then? When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day night. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Shelah. Again, you could be out there in a moment knowing that you uh, he is pushing you to say something, yes. But more rather, when you're doing something you know you're not supposed to do. 
Kind of like what King David did with Bathsheba. And then Nathan came to him. And he answered at first with indignation at Nathan's little parable against him. Then what did Nathan do? Of course, thou art the man. Verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Silah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or, or as the mule which have no understanding, ah, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. What is that? Which have no understanding, departing from evil? Yeah. And, we'll, and look at how it, this finishes up. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall, shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Upright in heart. Oh, the Lord knows your heart, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. Psalm 32 touches on many things, doesn't it? But looking at verse 9, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding. And we had already kind of addressed that in Job chapter 39. Understanding departing from evil, meaning also too that they have no fear of the Lord, which is wisdom. Sounds like quite a few of the devils you might encounter, right? Also sounds very eerily like what? Catholicism, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Who through the Jesuits and all their moral theologians, like I said, they can justify every single sin that they can think of. And find a way to circumvent the truth of the scriptures. There's no reasoning with people like that. Because they can twist whatever it is to fit their own means, to justify themselves. Hmm. And, and look across the page to Psalm 33, verses 16 on to verse 22 now. There is a Psalm 33, just look right across or turn the page, however it is in your set of scriptures. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. Now stop. The multitude of an host. Do not Catholics, again, if you've ever talked with Catholics long enough, and you get it, and they, you get them around to it, they will boast about how big their church is. Well, again, Jesus would have the biggest one. No, actually, no, no. No, he would not. Because the biggest one is of the world. And remember, his kingdom is not of this world. Or else his servants would fight. Remember what he said to Pilate? A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. So we see that the horse is very strong. Like so many of these devils are, aren't they? They're really strong in their conviction to do evil. But a horse is a vain thing for safety. 
The horse is prepared against the day of battle, and safety is of the Lord. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him. Because we have trusted in his holy name. What name is that? Jesus Christ. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. You, you do trust on what the Lord has done for you, right? Why are some of you acting like horses? Hmm? I wonder. Go to Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. Now we're going to see a very interesting tie-in here. Isaiah chapter 31. And uh, hopefully we can read this entire chapter while there's still time left in the day. Woe to them that go... Uh, Isaiah chapter 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Again, our instruction in righteousness. Egypt is likened unto a type of the world. And Pharaoh is likened unto a type of Satan. Going to the world. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Aha! You devils glory in your numbers. Don't you? And the truth is, there is more of them than there are of us. But you got to remember, greater is he that is in us, church of the living God, ground and pillar of the truth, than they that are in the world. Why is that? Because they trust on stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. They look to flesh, to fleshly means. Their spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his war, his words. Who will bring evil? The Lord who creates evil? Yeah, see, see, the God of all, remember? The God of all things, he is the God of all. There ain't nothing happening without his say-so. Remember, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, there ain't no coincidences. But will rise, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. See, all these devils, they have many means to help them. Because they're being lifted up by the Vatican. By flesh. Not by the Spirit of God. 
they have many resources. But see, our resources are heavenly. Because the weapons of our warfare where our warfare are not carnal, are they? No. But mighty in God to law to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. Things that people latch on to, cling to. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, the world. The men are not God. And their horses, <laughs> flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. For thus saith the Lord, for thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hills thereof. Isn't that very interesting, in, uh, verse 4, in comparison to Job chapter 39, what we've already looked at in a way? Hmm? As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword. Not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted. Flee from a sword. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion. In his furnace in Jerusalem. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men, not God. Your Pope isn't God, even though he calls himself the Vicar of Christ. And his army, the Jesuits, Horses, flesh, not spirit. <laughs> when the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fall together. Uh, go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. <laughs> I get it now, Lord. What, why he wanted me to do this today. Especially with all the things that he is showing your servant. Thus, uh, Jeremiah 17, verses uh, 5 on to verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, 
and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Oh, but the Lord knows your heart. For he shall be like the, the, the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Contrast between saved and lost. See. The faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is not a faith of flesh. While anything that is contrary to the faith given from the authorized version of the scriptures is a faith built, built upon what? Flesh. Not spirit. Oh, you sure! The spirit of Antichrist, which is all about the flesh. And what about the man who trusteth in the Lord, uh, whose hope the Lord is? Note that. And whose hope the Lord is. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes. Jesus Christ is alive. Yes, he is God. He is the Father. Is your trust on him or in flesh? Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful. In the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Talk about something of flesh here. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And if you've made flesh your arm, the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not spirit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now, now go to Isaiah, go back to Isaiah chapter 51, Isaiah chapter 51, Isaiah chapter 51, verses 9 on to verse 16, this is something we have to remember, brethren, because the hour is getting late, and sooner or later, this arm of flesh of the Vatican is going to tighten up. It's going to flex itself. And it's going to come for those of us who adhere to the scriptures and not to men. When they come knocking at that door of yours, trying to force something upon you, Isaiah 51, verses 9 on to verse 16. Let's remember this, okay? Also, brethren, Keep in mind the true martyrs before us. You know, the ones that are talked about in Fox's Book of Martyrs. And all you, you out there, get Fox's Book of Martyrs and read it. And see what the Church of the Living God, 
went through under the tyranny of Roman Catholicism and the Jesuit order. And you think these people, well, you, the Church of the Living God, you know this, but Catholics are the bad guys, remember? Yeah. Isaiah 51, verses 9 on to verse 16. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord. <laughs> awake as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Who's the dragon? Job chapter 41, Leviathan, the dragon. Uh, the devil, Satan, okay? Art thou not it which hath dr dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransomed to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I am he that comforteth you. And when the comforter has come, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, I, even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass? Now think now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can't tell you how many times I've met these tough guys who are afraid of nobody. But yet, if they're Jesuit, provincial, give a little tug on their leash, they cower. Yeah, there, there are these uh, devils out there who fear no man, right? Right. Except they're provincials. Yeah. And it, that scene that happened at the Aldi here in town, big tough guy, big tough guy that I encountered, huge, who could have pummeled me to an oblivion if he so chose, was so horrified of me not wearing a mask. He's like, stand back, stand back, get back, get back. Big tough guy, because I was a little closer than six feet. Oh. <laughs> The tough guy. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. These tough guys. Who could, who could pound us into an oblivion, right? So brave and strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tough guy, huh? Tough guy. Bowing to the Egyptians that are not God. And trusting in horses. Which are not spirit. And then when we look at this. Who art thou that shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the son of man which shall be made as grass. And see, with this right here, you have to remember something about the Jesuit order. They do not leave well enough alone. The Jesuit does not forgive nor forsake. The Jesuit will not do the admonition of uh, one, two, and leave them alone. No, they will go after you, they will kill you, and then they will go after your immediate family, as many as they can go after, to erase your execrable race. As they say in their 
extreme oath of induction, calling you a heretic. Nothing to do with your skin color, by the way, thank you very much. No. The Jesuit does not forgive nor forsake. And of course, they also will go to where it says in Titus about uh, a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oopsie. Oh, you heard, yeah, I forgot. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. I usually have that silence during videos. You're welcome. You're welcome. Praying for you, of course. Let's continue. Let's reread verse 12 again. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass. And forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath, stretched the that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hath feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy? And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. And I have put my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Greater who is in you than he that is in the world. Are you afraid of a man that will die? Like I said, I, I can't, can't tell you how many times I've run into these here, you know, tough guys. Right. These tough guys who, who just... <laughs> like I said, that, that one guy who is... Uh, <laughs> that one guy that I ran into at the Aldi. Big tough guy who could have pummeled me to an oblivion if he so chose was more terrified of me standing closer to him than six feet and not having a mask. Then there are these foolish, crazy, brave people who will go on suicide missions, so to speak, in a way, to prove how fearless they are. But yet when they get a little tug from their provincial, just like a dog, Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 22 and verse 26. Jeremiah 13, verses 22 and verse 26. And if thou say in thine heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thine iniquity are thy skirts discovered, and thy heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good, that are accustomed to do evil. Therefore will I scatter them as the stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face, 
that thy shame may appear. And, and let's read verse 27 really quick. I have seen thine adulteries and thy names. What does a horse do? <laughs> the lewdness of thy whoredoms and thine abominations on the, high, on the hills in the field. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem. Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? And of course, uh, reference again, Isaiah chapter 31, <laughs> verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And the horse is flesh, not spirit. You devils work out of the flesh. And that spirit that is in you is the spirit of Antichrist. Which is all about the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. But let us remember that admonition that we just looked at, brethren. And let this be a little comfort unto you when you're out there. And especially in the times that we are living. It's not going to get better. And like the Black Pope himself said, we ain't going back to what it was before all this stuff happened. This is the new normal. And remember what it says in Isaiah chapter uh, 31. Excuse me. Again, let's... Oh, no, I said... Excuse me, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Uh, Isaiah 51, verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou, that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man, which shall be made as grass? Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Verses 1 under verse 7. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait a second. Do I got the right place? Nah, Luke 12. Excuse me. <laughs> Luke 12, not 11. And why did I write Luke 11? Luke chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 7. Luke chapter 12. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Pharisees are ones who set their own tradition above the scriptures. And as in the, the book by Leone, where the Jesuits openly confess that the scriptures are against them, they elevate their tradition above the scriptures pursuant to the Council of Trent. Catholics are the Pharisees. And all those that are associated onto that whore, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, all the coadjutors, all the devils, all the hirelings, because they are all about the flesh. All about the flesh. You take a covering of flesh but not of the Spirit of the Lord, because their spirit is the Spirit of Antichrist, whom they serve. Verse 2, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Again, give them time. They always shoot themselves in the foot. Therefore, whatsoever... Ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear 
and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have nothing more they can do. Again, the Jesuits, they won't go just after you. They'll go after your family. But even, then, even thus, even thus, once they have killed, that's all they can do. They want you to believe that they can, you know, that their stupid Pope Francis, or uh, Sosa, excuse me, the most powerful man on earth, okay, um, they want you to believe that they have power to put you in hell or to take you out through their stupid purgatory or the or uh, what is that the indulgences and stuff like that. It's nonsense, of course. And if you fall for that, <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah, if you fall for that. But they they are not God. <laughs> the Egyptians are men, not God. And their horses are flesh, not spirit. You afraid of a man who should that's gonna die? Verse five. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, referring unto himself, by the way which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Who is that? The Lord himself. Because who's going to be sitting on the throne at the great white throne of judgment? It's the judgment seat of Christ for us, the church of the living God. Remember, two and two, two plus two equals four, not thirty-six. Unlike what the Jesuits would have you to believe. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore; ye are more value. Than many sparrows. What does that mean? Fear not. Fear man bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. You follow me? Go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Verses nine on to verse nineteen. I got a video called um, Gleanings from uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. It's an expository video. If I can remember, I'll put it in this video in the description box. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. On to verse 19. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to receive and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Yes, and there is no temptation come upon you that is common um, uh, of, of man. But with that temptation, our Lord will provide a way of escape so that ye may be able to bear it. Not escape from it. He'll give you a way so that you may be able to bear the temptation. Usually in personal experience, it has to do with the scriptures or a good old-fashioned psalm or hymn, you know? Verse 10, But chiefly them that walk after the 
flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Government. Uh, mortification of the flesh. Self-government. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Self-willed. Kind of like the horse who says, Ha ha! And charges headlong into a battle. He's made without fear. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Here's a good comparison. Here's a good thing to compare unto a lost person. Um, but these as natural brute beasts. Beasts. As Paul refers to the beasts at Ephesus. But these as natural, unregenerate, brute, strong beasts. Isn't the son of perdition also known as the beast? Made to be taken and destroyed. Made of who? This is not Calvinism. Made of their own. By themselves. Because of what they have chosen. Self-made, self-willed. I uh, see the made, made to be taken and destroyed. Okay. Self-willed, despise governments, government, self-government. Okay. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes. Spots. Can the leopard change his spots? Sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. You know, trying to worm in. You know, infiltrators, that kind of thing. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. They revel in it. Having eyes full of adultery. Know you not that friendship of with the world is enmity against God, you adulterers and adulteresses. Yeah. Yeah. Beguiling unstable souls. A double-minded man is unstable in, a, in all his ways. Trying to have mind, their mind on the things of the world and on the things of the spirit. Good luck. And heart they have exercised <laughs> with covetous, covetous practices. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice Forbade the madness of the prophet. A female donkey, by the way, spake with a man's voice. Don't, don't miss that. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried away with a tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Brethren and sisters. And these are some of the men that you are afraid of? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, 
Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Great swelling words of vanity. Just believe. You don't have to have a changed life. The Lord won't change your life. You don't have to. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Especially, uh, especially if it comes from a broken and contrite heart. You don't need a broken and contrite heart. No, you just need fleshly mental belief. <laughs> While well, they promised them liberty. Yeah, free to live in sin. They themselves are the servants of corruption. Servant. A servant has a choice. A slave does not. Like Mr. MacArthur says that it ought to be slave in every occurrence, which is known as uniform translation when, it, when it's in the context, how it's defined in context, not uniform translation. Yeah. They themselves, the servants of corruption, because they can't cease from sin. They can't. They love it. They love it. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought in bondage. Remember how Paul talks about to whom ye are servants to obey, him ye will obey, whether unto sin, unto death, or of the Lord unto righteousness. I guess Watch that a little bit, but you know what I'm saying. Hmm. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You know, brethren, when attacked, when bogged down by the things of the world, flesh, and all the servants of flesh who glorify themselves in the strength of a horse, which is flesh and not spirit. Romans chapter 8, verses 31, on to the close of the chapter. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 unto the close of the chapter. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Now, in context, the elect there is referring onto the church of the living God. It's the context, not uniform. Okay? It's context. Okay? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. You know, those you Jesuits out there who have actually put anathemas upon me? Hi. Who have threatened me with your anathemas? Um, who is he that condemneth? I'm not afraid of you, a man who's going to die. And no matter what you do, you're just going to heap 
more coals of fire upon your own head. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who? shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, oh, excuse me, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, but things to come, neither height nor death, nor any other creature, subtle creatures of the field, which the Lord God had made, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know that hymn, Onward, Christian soldier? You ought to learn that hymn. Onward, Christian soldier. It's a very good hymn. Very, very good hymn. Uh, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we will end it here. Let's read from verses 1. Oh. On to verse 16. And 2 Timothy chapter 2. Then we'll be done. Gone over these before, but... This is not the time to, to play it safe. Let's get out there while it is still called today. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall also who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evil evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. Again, context, talking about the church of the living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile. Okay? That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. 
If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now that's not talking about you losing your salvation. It's talking about you losing rewards. You know, when you know that the Lord would have you to say something in a given situation and you know it's the Lord and you're checking out because you fear man. Hey, that happens. And you tell me how you feel after, the, after that happens. How would I, I've been there, done that. <laughs> I'll tell you something, brother. Out there in that situation, that ain't happening again, no matter what happens. You got to get to that place where you have that confidence on our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself because we are of him. Okay? We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. We are of his bones and of his flesh. We are his ambassadors. Okay? Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers, which is a tactic of the devils. You'll have this, 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 and they'll pick on one word, and make that the main of the narrative while the whole sandwich is talking about something else, but they will use one word within that to divert. Verse 15 and 16. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. And you know what, brethren? i got to confess to you. I am guilty of that. Not shunning profane and, fain and vain babblings. Babble! Related to mystery Babylon, the great. I, I'm guilty of that. I am. Not shunning profane and vain babblings. And Lord willing, even though the devils really know how to do it well, <laughs> Lord willing, we keep our eyes upon Jesus and stay fixed on him. And let, our, and let not ourselves get distracted, which I have done. Stay the course, brethren. And, you know, when we do nothing, what happens? Nothing. Well, the work I did was in vain. You don't know that. You don't know that. Remember, it's about reaching one individual, one person, spirit, soul, body. If, it, if you make it about the one, you know, reaching just one person. And when the Lord has used you for his own glory, when reaching one person, maybe it will be a ripple effect. You know, you seek, do you seek great things? Start with the smallest of numbers. Start there. Because you don't know in whatever situation you're in, who's watching, who's going to be, wow, that guy had some, that guy had some uh, guts. 
or that woman had some guts handing out a tract. That guy knocked the tracks out of my hand. Walked away. See that, like I said before, those are the kinds of things, the kinds of witness and testimony that sticks. And it's nothing of your own doing. You're just doing as the Lord would have you to do. Remember, we do have to put, we have to go, you know, like he said unto the children of Israel, there's a promised land, I'm with you, go get it. But when you make the going to get the main focus instead of the one who is telling you to go get it, who is with you, then you have the problem. And hence, the fleshly religion that you and I are fighting against, dear brother and sister, Church of the Living God. Don't forget that. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, strengthen you and quicken you all today in whatever capacity he has put you in. It's going to be it for this video. Um, got more videos coming, obviously. Um, got a, another collaborated, praise the Lord, video that will be coming here this week, uh, Lord willing, um, before Saturday, Lord willing, that will be coming this week. Um, still a very, 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 very good sermon um, that uh, will be, like I said, a collaborated effort. Um, praise the Lord for it. But anyway... Thank you. Thank you. Brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God, for your prayers. We're praying for the ramp. And um, just thank you. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.